Our next presenter to the podium, Michael Erickson, Senior Vice President Australia from Anglo Gold Ashanti. Mike was appointed Senior Vice President of Australia um, at Anglo Gold Ashanti in 2014. He joined Anglo Gold in 2002 and was the General Manager at Sunrise Dam for six years. Mike has accountability for the Australian operations of the company, which consist of the Sunrise Dam and Tropicana Gold Mines in the northeastern goldfields of WA. Mike sits on the board of the Minerals Council of Australia and is on the advisory board of the Chamber of Minerals and Energy of Western Australia. Over to you, Mike. Thank you, Chair, and uh, thanks to the organisers of uh, Diggers and Dealers for the opportunity to present again uh, this year. I don't have any um, look-alike photos, <laughs> but I have one of these. Um, and if you want to read it, um, you can have a look on the website because the presentation's there. I shudder to think who Cookie would actually pair me up uh, with, to be honest. Um, but it's great to be back in Kalgoorlie for another Diggers and Dealers, and uh, we're fortunate, um, uh, very fortunate, to be able to, um, to meet during such challenging times. And I, I'd, I'd like to acknowledge uh, our mining colleagues around the world who are not faring nearly as well uh, as we are uh, in Australia, yet they're continuing to uh, operate mines and, and support their local communities. So today I'm going to give a brief uh, update on our global portfolio before um, discussing our operations here in the goldfields where we have been operating for almost uh, 25 years. Anglo Gold Ashanti's overall objective is to safely deliver quality production. This means enhancing margins, extending mine lives and improving the portfolio. We're committed to maintaining capital discipline in the current gold price environment with emphasis on further deleveraging the balance sheet, concluding the divestment processes that have seen the disposal of our mines in South Africa, growing ore reserves and delivering our growth projects. Our greatest strength is our world-class portfolio of assets run by a truly excellent team. As we focus on higher quality, lower cost mines, we've taken decisive and sometimes difficult steps to optimise the portfolio. At Abwasi, our redevelopment efforts are creating a world-class, high-margin asset for the long term. And all reserves are being added across the portfolio, notably at Gator in Tanzania, a, a truly world-class asset, and at Siguri, Abwasi, Cuiaba in Brazil, and Sunrise Dam. At the same time, we're progressing exciting greenfields, copper gold, and gold projects in Colombia. Our footprint is also set to expand in the United States, where we've been progressing the Silicon Gold Project in southern Nevada. Silicon is located in the Beatty District and is adjacent to Corvus Gold's North Bullfrog and Motherlode deposits. We hold 19.5% of Corvus and last month announced a proposal to acquire the remaining shares in the Canadian company. The proposed transaction is valued at approximately 370 million US dollars and through combining Corvus's assets with our own, we have the opportunity to create a, a meaningful new production base for Anglo Gold in a top-ranking mining jurisdiction. Increasing ore reserves is an absolute priority, and in the past year, we've increased the reserve life of our portfolio by 11 years through investment in ore reserve conversion and brownfields exploration success. In 2020, on the back of our aggressive exploration program and the divestment of assets in Mali and South Africa, we recorded a 45% increase in the average grade of our proved and probable ore reserves. Looking out over the longer term, we're going to grow gold produ production by about 20% over the next five years as Abwasi in Ghana achieves steady state operation, Tropicana reverts to normalised production following the current investment in mine life extension, and we achieve production gains in Brazil, at Seguri in, in Guinea, and at Sunrise Dam. In fact, most of the growth over the next five years is driven by improvements in our current suite of operating assets, supplemented in the outer years by Quebradonna and Gramolotte projects in Colombia, which will have a material impact on the production and cost trajectory of the business over the long term. These are long life, low cost projects, and at steady state are expected to improve our long-term all-in-sustaining costs by over 10%. Key, 
Quebradonna allows the group to di diversify into copper production at an attractive estimated copper all in sustaining cost margin of 60 to 70 per cent. Gramolotte will add attributable ounces of 125 to 150,000 per annum to the portfolio at a nominal all in sustaining cost of six to seven hundred dollars an ounce. And together with the Boissy, the Colombian projects will add approximately 20 million gold equivalent ounces of production to the portfolio, or about 1 million ounces per annum when at steady state. We're in the late stages of, com of completing the feasibility study at Quebradonna, which is um, uh, an Anglo Gold Ashanti discovery and remains 100% owned by the company. We're also well advanced on permitting. The mining tenements are secure and the land required for the development has been acquired. The mine will be an underground sublevel caving operation and because of the very favourable topography, access will be via two six kilometre uh, tunnels. Processing will use conventional grinding and flotation to produce a copper gold concentrate which will be sold into the global copper market. With reserves of 3.1 billion pounds of copper and 2.5 million ounces of gold, average annual production is expected to be 130 million pounds of copper and 67,000 ounces of gold for 23 years. Once the go-ahead has been given, construction will take approximately four years at a capital cost of approximately 1.3 to 1.4 billion US dollars. And the returns on the project are attractive at conservative copper and gold prices. The, copper, the cost of copper production <coughs> is estimated to be around $1.10 a pound after gold credits, based on a US $1,300 an ounce gold price. Anglo Gold's Colombian team has been working with the local community, regulators and government to understand their aspirations and concerns. And we've developed the concept of mining as a tangible tool for social, environmental and economic development with an innovative plan to create and integrate a park and biodiversity centre into the project. Gramolotte is our second project in Colombia. It's a 50-50 joint venture with B2 Gold as operator and it's a large open pit gold project with attributable reserves of 1.7 million ounces. We're in the late stages of completing the feasibility study and the project is already permitted, uh, permitted with minor amendments being finalised with the regulators. Colombia is also the birthplace of Albert, uh, Alberto Calderon who was announced as our new CEO last month. Alberto, who starts with the company on the 1st of September, held senior leadership positions in the IMF and the Colombian government and was CEO of Colombia's largest mining operation before moving into executive leadership roles at BHP and then becoming CEO of Orica in 2015. His appointment has generated a great deal of interest in the media, particularly in Colombia, as you might well imagine. I'd now like to talk about our Australian operations, uh, starting with, um, with Sunrise Dam. The Sunrise Dam all bodies world class, producing over 10 million ounces of gold to date, and it remains open at strike, uh, uh, open long strike and at depth. Sunrise Dam's a large, complex underground mine with huge potential. At Sunrise Dam, the strategy is simple, to fill the mill with the best possible ore. We're doing this through underground exploration and aggressive development to build all body knowledge and add all reserves, and by advancing open pit opportunities within trucking distance of the plant. Our mining alliance partner, our mining alliance with Barminko underpins this work and they're doing a terrific job. The aim of our strategy is to ultimately deliver annual ore production of three million tonnes from the underground mine, complemented by one million tonnes from regional sources which will displace low-grade stockpiled ore in the mill feed. This will lift annual gold production from current levels of between 230 to 250,000 ounces uh, per year to around 300,000 ounces per year. Mill throughput's consistently at the 4 million tonne per annum mark, and we're seeing the benefit of the float fine grind circuit that was commissioned in 2018 to improve metallurgical recovery. Vogue is the anchor ore body. Um, uh, is the anchor underground ore zone at Sunrise Dam and it contributes up to 80% of underground production. Multiple ore sources make up the remaining 20%. 
In the second half of 2019, we initiated a three-year accelerated exploration strategy to identify new ore zones, improve mining flexibility and enhance the future production profile. This is a significant investment in Sunrise Dam's future and it's bearing fruit. Since the start of last year, we've invested more than 50 million Australian dollars in the underground exploration program and added more than a million ounces to mineral resources. Our discovery cost per ounce is around US $40 an ounce for measured, indicated and inferred resources and $30 a, a, an ounce when inventory is included. The accelerated exploration program has focused on down plunge extensions to Vogue, the area where the Carey and Vogue domains converge, the Frankie discovery and the Flamingo target. We're particularly excited about the new discovery at Frankie, which is indicating higher average grades, is well away from the Vogue mining area and is close to the existing western exploration incline, which could easily provide an alternative access to the surface. We're currently drilling Frankie intensively to generate a reserve. In parallel, we're also developing into the ore body and setting up for stoping. Frankie's open in all directions. Based on results to date, we envisage this area has the potential to deliver approximately 500,000 tonnes of ore per annum over a five year period from 2023, with trial mining commencing in the December quarter this year. And that's without any further extensions. At this conference last year, we announced that the, the mining contract for Golden Delicious had been awarded to Aboriginal contractor Carey Mining. This is the first standalone full service mining contract between Anglo Gold and Carey Mining, building on the enduring and positive business partnership that began over 25 years ago. Mining at Golden Delicious, which is 12 kilometres from the Sunrise Dam processing plant, is progressing extremely well. Approximately 19 million tonnes of material will be mined in total, containing around 3 million tonnes of ore. The pit will be mined in two stages, with the ultimate depth reaching 155 metres, and it has a span of approximately 420 metres in, in diameter. Waste stripping began in the December quarter. First ore was delivered in May, and from the second half of this calendar year, Golden Delicious Ore will totally displace low-grade stockpile mill feed for approximately 18 months. Carey has excelled in integrating this work seamlessly with the underground ore rehandle contract, achieving valuable synergies for both parties. Golden Delicious has also enabled Carey to build capacity to provide their own road, tra road train haulage capability on site. We now have contracts worth more than 40 million annually with Indigenous businesses and we spend more than $100 million on procurement of goods and services in the goldfields every year. Our partnership with Kerry Mining has gone well beyond contracts. With Kerry and our mining alliance partner at Tropicana McMahon, we run the Get Into Mining traineeship program for Indigenous employees. Get Into Mining enables Aboriginal people from the eastern goldfields to gain valuable skills to work in mining and then transition into employment at Tropicana and Sunrise Dam. In the June quarter, the fifth group to successfully complete the eight-week program graduated with a nationally recognised qualification and moved into employment at Tropicana. We're holding information sessions here in Kalgoorlie next week, ahead of recruitment for the next course. We're also working with Kerry to introduce a CAT simulator to support the training program, which will expand to take place at both sites. I'd now like to talk about Tropicana, which has uh, been in the, in, in the media lately. Tropicana's status as a tier one asset was highlighted recently through the very competitive bidding process for IGO's 30% stake in the operation. We welcome our new JV partner, Regis Resources, a company whose values are well aligned with ours, backed by solid open pit and underground expertise here in the goldfields. Tropicana's story is one of continuous improvement, and today I'd like to take you through the optimisation journey of the processing plant and give you an update on the evolution of the mining strategy. All of this has been made possible by the outstanding people we have at the site and in our regional support teams. When the processing plant was commissioned in 2013, 
Nameplate throughput was 5.5 million tonnes per annum. Conveyor upgrades in 2015 and the addition of two CIL tanks in 2016, along with a constant focus on continuous improvement, lifted throughput to 7 million tonnes per annum. Commissioning of a second mill, a 6 megawatt belt ball mill to complement the 14 megawatt primary mill and provide grind flexibility was completed in late 2018. By the end of last year, we had lifted mill throughput by just over 58% to 8.8 .8 million tonnes per annum through these sequential optimisation projects. The final stage in our optimisation journey was a duty swap of the thickness to take plant throughput to just over 9 million tonnes per annum. The high throughput is in part achieved by the world-class plant availability and runtime. For the last five years, the runtime has consistently exceeded 96% despite the upgrades and modifications made in the plant. This is testament to our high, highly capable processing and engineering teams and detailed project planning. The thickness swap project that was, that was successfully completed in June is an example of Anglo Gold Ashanti's operational excellence approach in practice and reflects the relentless focus on continuous improvement. This project involved changing the duties of the thickeners so that we could use the larger 44 metre diameter tails thickener as a leach feed thickener, with a smaller 34 metre diameter thickener used then for tails, relieving the bottleneck. Feed system upgrades were carried out for both thickeners and bypass lines were established to allow most of the construction work to be carried out while the plant was still online. The whole process took six weeks to execute and the final tie-ins and duty switches were carried out during a scheduled shutdown. Up until June 2020, ore production from the open pits exceeded the plant capacity, allowing higher grade ore to be preferentially treated while lower grade ore was accumulated on stockpiles. With the completion of the Tropicana and initial Havana pits midway through last year, grade streaming came to an end as planned. From that point on, mill feed consisted of ore from the Boston Shaker open pit, the Boston Shaker underground, and stockpiles, as the next phase of the deepening of the Havana pit is undertaken. The Havana cutback investment period extends through 21 and most of 22 with a corresponding increase in unit cost per ounce until 23 when grade streaming recommences as Havana ore volumes increase. The open pit mining strategy at Tropicana has been designed to optimise cash flow, NPV and the delivery of ore. This strategy has culminated in the recent decision to go ahead with the final cutback following the outcome of a trade-off study to assess the optimal method of mining the deeper Havana ore body by de determining the cutover point between open pit and underground. The study concluded that the Havana open pit cutback returns were superior to an early underground strategy. The Havana cutback will generate a further 32 million tonnes of ore for one and a half million ounces of gold, extending the mine life from 27 to 2030. Commercial production for the expanded Havana pit is scheduled to be achieved in late 2020 and an underground pre-feasibility study will be conducted next year on the Havana resource that extends beneath the final pit design. The Havana pit will provide a stable production base to incorporate additional underground sources and further exploration success into the life of mine plan. Commercial production at our first underground mine, Boston Shaker, was successfully delivered on time and on budget in September last year. Our Alliance mining partner for both the open pit and underground operations, McMahon, is doing an excellent job and is a major contributor to the site's performance. Boston Shaker Underground was timed to contribute higher grade mill feed to enhance the gold production profile and maximise cash flow this year, from this year onwards during the period of higher waste stripping in the Havana open pit. The underground mine is on track to achieve its full production rate of 1.1 million tonnes per annum in the current half year and from that point will contribute 100,000 ounces annually to the site's gold production. Boston Shaker is only the first of what we anticipate will be several underground mines at Tropicana. 
<coughs> An underground drill drive off the Boston Shaker decline has been established to test the extensions to the mineralisation between the Tropicana open pit. The drill drive is well positioned to provide production access to the Tropicana underground reserve should one be defined. Now, drilling to date gives us encouragement that we'll be able to develop our next underground mine beneath the Tropicana pit, and we're now establishing platforms to drill the northern extent of the mineralisation as well as the down dip extensions. Developing to the south from the Tropicana drill drive gives us the opportunity to explore the mineralised system between Tropicana and Havana very cost effectively, and ultimately access the Havana underground min mineralisation in the future. Near mine exploration continues to focus on testing the geological model to the north and south of Tropicana, looking for strike extensions and offsets to the mineralised trend. The story of the Tropicana gold mine is one of continuous improvement. Leveraging the excellent performance of the processing plant and fully exploiting the, the significant potential of the mineralised system. The mine life of Tropicana has now been extended by more than seven years at annual throughput rates now some 70% higher than originally contemplated at board approval and I'm sure there's more still to come. Anglo Gold of Shanty is at an exciting inflection point in its growth path. We're now positioned to capitalise on the work put into optimising the global portfolio and we're approaching our strategic plans from a position of financial strength. Investment in our operations, including those in Australia, and the two excellent Greenfields projects in Colombia that will, will come up for board approval this year, will further underpin our, our growth plans. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, so we'll have no questions this afternoon, but you can catch them at the booth if anyone has anything that they'd like to discuss. Um,